Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to greet you again. This is the second episode of FPC Podcast on the Visegrad Group in Georgia, a project which is supported by the Embassy of the Republic of Poland to Tbilisi. And today I have an honor to welcome the Ambassador of Hungary in Georgia, Her Excellency Victoria Horvath, and a friend of mine, Mr. Shotom Geladze, Research Fellow of the Foreign Policy Council on Central European Issues. Good morning, dear friends. Uh, so, uh, the first question uh, that I'm going to address to Her Excellency is about the meaning and importance of B4. Your Excellency, uh, why this regional union V4 matters for your country? Well, why shouldn't? <laughs> so if you <laughs> if you look at the map, even on the world map, world map, let's say, look at the size of Europe, and then look at the size of all countries. And uh, just uh, measure how big or small we are on the world map, or even in the Europe European Community. So uh, it's it's obvious that some kind of um, communication, cooperation, alliance should be there for us. And also, this is an historian. Historical uh, alliance. Um, can you imagine this Visegrad three first and then four goes back to the 12th century when the emperors of these countries uh, sat down and uh, decided to to create a strength, strength and stronger, stronger um, alliance to make them bigger and more powerful, to grow the economy and a bit uh, to defend themselves from the, from the bigger neighbors. And it was extremely successful. So after the um, changes uh, and the early 90s, it was obvious that we need to have something similar. We go through the same path the same challenges. We have also this uh, historical heritage, legacy, uh, almost the same. And so we shared the same story. It, it means that it's obvious we need to talk to each other and uh, find the topics, the issues we can cooperate and agree. And it seems the cooperation is extremely successful. Uh, next February, 15th of February, we'll be 30 years old. We are very proud of our V4 uh, cooperation um, and support it uh, whenever, wherever we can. Thank you very much for your answer, Your Excellency. And uh, I'd like to use this uh, privilege to be the moderator of this conversation. And I'd like to give you the second question. Could you say, uh, a couple of words about the main achievements of V4. Um, to go through this transition time that's smooth and with this uh, development in economy and society is already an achievement. Our European integration 2004, before the NATO integration, these were done hand in hand. Um, of course, we are not always on the same page. There are issues we we are not uh, we, we are not sharing the the same opinion, but uh, we have more more common than uh, than um, we we have to argue on. So. It was very obvious from the first moment that this cooperation works, this is alliance works. So uh, as being part of the European Union, even sometimes we need to, to discuss topics 
which opinion to represent. And that's what we do always in the last years. And uh, our representatives, prime ministers, presidents, and the uh, minister of foreign affairs are able to representative um, represent um, an opinion which is uh, which strengthens our lobby power, and it seems that uh, it's necessary. It's necessary. But if you look at the um, the um, just the previous past of the European Union, the discussion about the migration, the discussion of budget, these four countries were able to um, voice the same messages, and it's it's a big achievement. And only itself the fact that we started to think not only from east to west and west to east, but also from north to south, and realize that, okay, things are happening between east and west, but why we are not connected north and south? So years before, our um, leaders agreed to develop the infrastructures between countries, um, the railway, the land road infrastructure, and it's already on the procedure. So, oh, and uh, not to mention the energy policy, where to connect, how to diversify, by the, the energy supplies. These are very, very, they are crucial topics. And to fight for a solution or for, a, for better, better results alone, instead of fighting together, working hard together, well, it seems feasible. Thank you very much for your answer, Your Excellency Shota, please. Uh, Your Excellency, what do you think? Uh, how should uh, Visegrad Four uh, should respond to the current challenges? Uh, I mean, coronavirus. Uh, on the other hand, there is Russia, uh, and uh, should we expect uh, that uh, this uh, platform or this alli alliance uh, that uh, uh, you mentioned transform trans will transform in itself? Uh, into other one, should we expect more from uh, Visegrad? Well, um, these are two different topics. Let's uh, first start with COVID. Uh, COVID hit not only our economy, but the, the world economy. And uh, these countries decided to come out from this extremely difficult situation stronger than before. Um, of course, um, extreme and special measures has to be taken. Uh, the word won't be the same like before. But um, to agree or to coordinate on um, restrictions, to talk about the how, not only the topic of what uh, helps a lot even maintaining this, uh, this I, I would say this very extreme uh, hard one year because it won't end now. Of course, it will, it will stay with us for another, I, I don't know how long. Uh, months, but uh, but even if you uh, look at the motto of the Polish presidency, that back to normal. We want to have a normal life, uh, whatever it means normal after after the situation. But we want to have, and these countries agreed that we want to have a functioning economy, a functioning state. That's, that's a very big step, the decision about this. We are already prepared for facing the challenges. And the corona started, COVID started, uh, these countries were supporting each other with equipments, 
with uh, with uh, data, with uh, experience, and then uh, now we are consulting even in regional development or economic development. We might could think that these countries are competitive in a competitive position, but uh, even for regarding economy, yes, sometimes we compete. We do it in investment promotion, but doesn't matter. From this is a fact. It doesn't keeps us away from the the chance to be friends as well. We compete for companies. We compete for ambassador uh, for uh, for investment, but also we promote each other's country, the V4 country, this region in the Far East or the um, um, for countries uh, in a in a bigger distance. As I said, alone we are invisible. It's very hard to recognize these small countries. So, so we need we need to we, we need to look like a bit bigger, and then then uh, then uh, to to find out that this attention we already got how to how to share. So that that works very well, and um, these countries, if you look at the 2019 GDP. They are the average GDP of the V4 countries are higher than the average in Europe. It seems these countries have some potential. These countries have some potential regarding um, investment, um, business, um, even still have a. It, it's a need also. Uh, not uh, not only a chance, but a need in uh, research and development. But the companies who wants to have a faster growth, uh, stable um, political um, situation, um, they want to have a good infrastructure. They could consider to come to the V4 countries. So this is our hope that we can be back to normal. Uh, soon, and we work very hard to come out uh, from this crisis stronger than we have been before. Not to mention about the importance of uh, Germany. Germany is the, for Germany, the V4 countries is, this four country is a bigger economic partner than France. So it's necessary. Germany matters for us, for all of the countries. It matters. It, we have to have a good uh, talk, a channel to, to the Western countries, but especially maintain our relationship to Germany as well. And this presidency gives high importance for, for that uh, goal as well. Your second question was about um, foreign policy, right? So, <clears throat> um, all of our foreign, foreign um, policy goals are dependent on our geopolitical relation, geopolitical position, no? We can do whatever we want, we can create great alliances, but uh, first, the neighbors, uh, The neighbors who are who are influencing our policy policy, and as you see, and on the map, maybe we share the same challenges, chances also, but the same challenges. But also sometimes it's not easy to be between Western and the East, and we need to find our way to be not pro this side and that side, but pro our countries. So this is what we can achieve with our cooperation, although we have in some topics a different position. 
Um, just back to the recent uh, happenings in Belarus, for example, in regarding Belarus, we share the same opinion. Um, as um, Hungary, especially Hungary, shares the, uh, the position of Poland. Poland is next to a bordering country to Belarus, having a huge minority there. We follow the lead of Poland and support them. So we find the way to to agree and to 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 voice our position. And this is the, the issue with uh, with European Union as well. But uh, what is common for or V for another common um, goal of the V4 country is, is the European integration and the process and the fact that we need to have the, the integration process on agenda. And uh, this is a very strong um, agreement uh, um, between the countries that Western Balkans integration should move forward and we should give also a clean perspective for the Eastern Partnership countries as well. Thank you very much for your answer, uh, Your Excellency. The history shows and illustrates how successful the story of V4 is. Because, uh, as you have already mentioned, V4 uh, member states have uh, sometimes similar positions, and this common position helps to get what uh, the member states want. A uh, perfect example is immigration quotas, uh, budgetary issues, and also Belarus. V4 is one of the most important actors in terms of uh, the communication between uh, Belarus and, I mean, the opposition and uh, demonstrators of Belarus and the European Union. Of course, we know the general position of Budapest in this regard, but could you say more about the evaluations and uh, the opinions that uh, current political elite in uh, Hungary have about this issue? What is the position of uh, uh, Budapest in regard to this question? As I said, um, Hungary follows the lead in, in the topic of uh, Belarus um, uh, among the V4 partners. Uh, we joined the, uh, the position of V4 and we agree on that and represent that. We strongly condemn the pressure and the opposition, con condemn the torture of political prisoners and urge democratic um, procedure democratic um, elections uh, in Belarus. This is a very clear message of our government. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Shota, please. Hi, Your Excellency. Uh, let's talk about uh, hot topics such as China. Uh, but before China, I let me remind you that uh, V4 had successful formats such as uh, V4 plus Japan and uh, V4 plus South Korea. Uh, as you know, China tries to establish links uh, in a format like uh, 70 plus one when is with uh, Eastern European countries. Uh, what is uh, your opinion about uh, this? Uh, can, uh, about future perspective of uh, V4 plus China? And while European Union labels China as uh, systemic uh, or calls China a systemic uh, uh, rival, what do you think about this? Well, what is the future perspective should decide uh, or um, governments? But indeed, this uh, 16 plus 1 format works very well and it's active because 
China wants to have it active, and uh, we think that the second biggest economy of the world should be a partner. And uh, Hungary, Hungary uh, contributes to the 16 plus and also uh, considers the, or activity with China uh, successful. Um, connect China with, with Europe for us um, is also a chance to be a gateway uh, hub for the Chinese traveling investment and initiatives. We took serious this chance. Um, we are active in, the, in this regard. And um, we represent uh, the opinion that uh, talks has to be made. So there, we should have a pragmatic approach to the big, um, big nations, big powers, which is valid as well. This, in this war, the um, we are facing now in an economy about power between US and China, we are, although I'm saying again, very small. So if we don't have a common approach, how to stay alive or profit from this uh, situation, and we don't talk to each other uh, about this, um, uh, about our policies or about our position, then we are already lost. 16 plus 1, it means also 16. So if we are smart enough, this 16 could be also a platform for us to have something, uh, uh, to elaborate something common, which is could be also useful in different other uh, foreign uh, policies and geopolitical issues. That's how I think. Um, Your Excellency, I have a question about the relations between B4 and Georgia. What's your impressions? Is uh, the visibility of B4 growing in Georgia? Because as from my point of view, I can say that yes, partially I can answer to this question because uh, more and more scholars and students go to study at B4 universities and uh, also we have, uh, uh, and we have already had a couple of discussions about the importance and meaning of this regional union. But what is your uh, impression? Impression as a representative of Hungarian MFA and uh, of a diplomat uh, which works and lives in Georgia. Well, uh, you asked me the question I wanted to ask you <laughs> because. I, I hope to believe that our visibility grows. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not really sure we are at the, I would say, wished level of, um, of um, visibility in Georgia, because it's just, I see that uh, from that transition period of Georgia is uh, already an issue how to have an approach to Brussels, to the US, mm. both West and what these four country wants to wants to tell us. So I really I really, I really would like to know uh, your opinion about this. Uh, I believe that uh, it was to to listen to the V4 countries. Mm -hmm. It was to create uh, a channel to these four countries, not only bilaterally, but multilaterally. Yes, we have the official uh, high-level meetings, 
-hmm. But um, in people-to-people -people corporations, in business corporations, and research and development corporations, it works. Because we know what Georgia is going through now. We are aware of that challenges. We are just 10, 15 years ahead. Mm -hmm. It depends on which type of uh, season we have, 10 or 15. Because in some aspects, you are most, most faster than, uh, than we were at the, at the, and in this transition uh, period. You are adopting uh, very fast, you are resilient, you are, and you want it very, very, very much. Of course, we wanted to to have these achievements and these uh, these results also very fast. And and uh, and uh, thanks God, uh, our position, which seems to us be difficult sometimes, but uh, regarding connectivity and political integration, we're much better. And so we could be part of the European Union. 2004. We could join to the NATO. It means a lot. It helps a lot. These sources we got, this, uh, this um, 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 investments, uh, these um, um, lectures we got from our Western partner were extremely helpful to stand on the level what we have now. So even I think V4 proved to be a very good lobby partner. We are a good lobby partner for each other. We are friends, we understand, we have a clear message to each other. Not talking around, we talk very frankly, agree what we can, go for what we can. Um, and it seems this is a good community, maybe worth to talk to. Uh, and don't forget, V4 is one of the strongest and loudest uh, promoter of the um, uh, neighborhood policy, the EU, EU European Union integration process. Mm -hmm. So, and we we believe really that even in this crisis situation, this is a proof we need to be larger. We need to be stronger and we need to have these countries already among us to face together. And, um, and we could be stronger with that, not only in the security issue, of course, but, uh, but we see a potential in that. And my minister, my prime minister is always very um, loud and use the chance to communicate about them. Well, uh, in response to your questions, Your Excellency, I can say that, yes, definitely, the visibility of V4 is growing in Georgia. Well, I'm proud to be as the representative and head of my organization, one of the main contributors in this regard, as a, as a person who studied in Poland and Hungary. So uh, uh, there are more and more discussions about V4. There are more and more articles and analytical publications in this regard. And yes, the embassies of V4 member states are <clears throat> operating quite actively. Uh, and uh, I would like to give you another question, uh, Your Excellency. What is your, I, I would not uh, like to use this word prediction, but uh, do you predict the enlargement of V4. For example, the current state of affairs show that maybe there are uh, the necessity of enlargement. I mean, there are active neighboring countries like Ukraine, Slovenia, which is, uh, I would say, the story of success in the European Union. Could the V4 be enlarged in the near future, Your Excellency? V4 enlargement? Well, <sighs> Sometimes they pop up this some kind of ideas regarding enlargement of people. I don't know really, and it's also um, in the hand of our um, leaders. But um, historically, it was a cooperation of these countries. 
as we have the V4 plus formats with European countries, with, uh, with Asian countries, uh, countries from all over the world, and also with Nordic countries. Um, at the moment, I cannot predict. It will be in the future and that stage, it remains in that stage in a plus V4 plus cooperation. It, it, it will be enlarged. Well, I really don't, I'm not able to answer your question. I understand. Shut up, please. Uh, your Excellency, of uh, uh, Belarus, uh, as we know, we four countries wanted to free uh, visa movement for Belarusian citizens. Uh, what do you think about it? And uh, what are other options that uh, we four countries offer for Belarusian citizens? What do you think what they should offer? Yeah, it's uh, quite a <laughs> difficult question, but uh, uh, I don't know uh, about free reason movements. We can offer some political support. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, they have political support, but the problem of Western countries, there was an interesting article in the New York Times that all the Western countries supported uh, Guaido after the elections in Venezuela, but still we got Maduro as a president in Venezuela. A lot of time has passed. And maybe the same kind of headache uh, will uh, we have in regards to Belarus. And that's why, yes, the issue is very, very problematic, Shota. And uh, maybe Her, Her Excellency has some uh, ideas uh, in this regard. What can be done more? We understand the meaning of Marshall Plan for Belarus, political support, and maybe there should be done more. I think Marshall Plan, so, um, it's very, very difficult uh, a question. I don't invite our, uh, uh, our uh, leaders how to do something good for the Belarus people, not to hurt them more. And and because uh, all kind of uh, all kind of support can be understood also um, a kind of um, unfriendly or um, or um, aggressive steps from the countries outside, which if uh, it helps, if, 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 if it's something which helps escalate the situation, of course, uh, it's harmful. But how I see the European Union is quite active uh, also to, to represent, to push the importance of uh, Peaceful, fair elections. The, um, condemns the the pressure and aggression of uh, the current regime towards the opposition and the protesters. So I think the Polish idea uh, about the Marshall Plan to uh, for Belarus and this visa-free um, option for the Belarusian people is already something uh, which uh, this uh, path um, could be um, um, walk. This, uh, this, I think this, this is too, too big, uh, too big uh, initiative, which both are for the people. I do understand that um, at the moment um, doesn't solve the problem. Of course, it's a very, very hard uh, way. I think to for for now the Belarusian society. We hope to have its end as much as. Uh, could be peaceful and um, and um, 
OSIM. Um, according to the Belarusian people, still. It's a very sensible uh, issue, really, and uh, the approach would be very prudent, of course. And uh, uh, Your Excellency, our conversation is coming to an end, uh, and uh, at the end of our podcast, I would say that uh, this project has a continuation in February on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of B4. Uh, the panel will be dedicated to the tankers and the uh, director of uh, Visegrad Fund, another important actor of uh, the regional regional union, the Visegrad Fund. And, uh, well, we'd like to thank you, Your Excellency, for being with us today, for spending the 40 minutes with us. And uh, the conversation was very interesting. I hope to continue the cooperation with the Embassy of Hungary, with Tbilisi. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you, Shota, and uh, thank you. all the best. Thank you so much. As being a contact embassy for the IVF, the Visegrad firm, very happy that uh, the IVF could contribute. As I understood, I have some noise uh, in the um, in the air. So if I I'm right, yeah, this program is also supported by the IVF, right? Yes. The Visegrad yes. Oh, great. So. We are the Hungarian Embassy to Georgia is the contact point embassy for the IVS. IVF. Hope to have such good projects in the future more and more. Thank you for the talk. Have a nice day. Have a nice day.